This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B and the multiverse, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Are it is a variant? Whew. You'll never know. It is Tuesday, August 24th. Thanks for being here. Shep, Texas isn't over Taysom Hill and what he did to them in 2013 and 14. And I'm here for it. I am <laughs> I am here for it. Uh, the Longhorn Network <laughs> tweeted out uh, last night um, a, a touchdown pass from Taysom to... Uh, One to of the greatest names in the history of sports. Lil Jordan Humphrey. Lil? Lil Jordan, Jordan Humphrey. Humphrey. Yes. Yep. So the, the tweet says, Lil Jordan Humphrey, preseason TD from he who will not be named. <laughs> and it was a touchdown <laughs> pass from Taysom last night in the Saints-Jags preseason yeah. game. Just throw a shell in there and then you hit the Harry Potter note, right? But that's hilarious, dude. That, like they, He is a public enemy in Austin. Like when we talk about that, some people think we're we're being no funny. No, 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 no. That's legit. Taysom Hill ruined multiple seasons for them. Ask Charlie Strong <laughs> and his family who had to move. Like Charlie Strong, like Taysom Hill got a guy fired. Manny Diaz, the game after the 2013 game. Char- he's a he's a uh, he's a job wrecker. There you go. It could be the reason Mac Brown needed to leave early to catch that flight. <laughs> 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 remember when that was that, was that 2016 I Toledo? I, I, what game was that? I'm trying in to that area, yeah. Oh man, That's I gotta funny. go. I gotta catch a flight. <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> he had had enough Provo multiple times. Here's your show lineup: the ACC, Big Ten, and Pac-12 Alliance will be announced today. Does it eventually force BYU's hand to join a league? We'll discuss. Will we be getting a starting quarterback name today? We might. Who knows? David McCann joins the program to discuss who th- he thinks it'll be. Taysom Hill's plight after Monday Night Football in the race for the state Saints starting quarterback. And the top five QB battles in BYU history. Let's read some headlines. Jerem just referenced it. Football will hold media availability this afternoon. It's expected that the starting quarterback will be announced sometime during this week with offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick saying Wednesday at the latest, quote, Stay tuned to BYU TV Sports and BYU Sports Nation social media pages for any announcements. It uh, it could happen today. We could know the guy today. Yeah. Yeah. Who's it going to be, man? Taysom Hill goes 11 for 20 for 138 yards and a touchdown in the Saints 23-21 exhibition win versus the Jaguars on Monday Night Football. Jaguars, please. Yes, the Jaguars. Jaguars. I love that. He played uh, six drives, leading to nine points. Saints head coach Sean Payton declined to name a starting quarterback after the game, saying, when we know which direction we're going, we'll let you guys know. Second round of NFL roster cuts are due today by 4 p.m. Eastern time. The rosters have to be down to 80, with the final roster cuts coming up uh, on August 31st. That's when teams have to get down to 53. There are currently 24 BYU players on rosters after Aleva Hifo, Micah Simon, and Diane Lake were previously cut. Gabby Garcia Fernandez had a team high 10 kills in Puerto Rico's sweep over Canada to win the country its first Norseca championship. Awesome. Garcia Fernandez's next gig is playing in Italy for AS Voli Lube. Honorary Cougar Tony Finau wins the Northern Trust in a playoff over Cameron Smith. Finau shot a final round 65, going five under on the back nine. He finished the tournament at 20 under. Mm. This is Finau's second tour win and first place, and in the first since he won the Puerto Rico Open back in 2016. 1,975 days. It's been a minute. It has been. It has been just a bit. And last but not least, Colton Shaver got on base twice, drawing two walks, and scored a run in the AAA Sugarland Skeeters uh, loss, 6-5 to the OKC Dodgers. All rise and shout! It's time for what's trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. Today, the Big Ten, ACC, and Pac-12 are announcing an alliance. At 2 Eastern time, that just in, uh, the figures to include scheduling, expansion, and other items, as first reported by Yahoo. Jason, while we don't know the exact details of the alliance, will this be a move in college football that forces BYU hand to eventually need to join a conference? And you're talking whether it's a P5 conference or G5 conference. Any conference. Just a conference. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I think it might be. And it's funny because we've spent so much time waiting for the big realignment. And there have certainly been things. And, and I don't want to shortchange and say that Oklahoma and Texas going to the SEC is not a major, major shift because we don't know what else is still on the horizon. But we've always been looking at conference expansion and a, a mass change of all of these teams going to different leagues as what would force BYU's hand. And it very well may be this alliance that we're seeing that may actually do it. And again, like you said, we still don't know a lot of the specifics as to what it will look like, but we know some general parameters. And I think the one that really holds the most water for this argument is the scheduling aspect of it. Right now, with BYU's model for scheduling as an independent, it relies heavily on scheduling P5 teams, whether it's three, four, sometimes five, as we've seen, obviously, this year with that. If this alliance means that there are fewer and fewer opportunities to be able to schedule those teams, specifically teams from the Pac-12 and things like that, then that breaks up BYU's model for scheduling as an independent. Yes. So <laughs> this really may be the domino that ultimately pushes the Cougars in that direction. It really may. Yeah, and, and I've said I want, you know, three power fives, maybe four, but probably three. Maybe this pushes BYU in that direction. It's more uh, palatable. It's more 10-win conducive. Uh, like if BYU wins eight this year, we'll be like, it's because they played seven power fives. Uh, but we'll see how this goes. I think BYU is going to do what it does, which is love to stand alone and be different. BYU loves this in athletics. BYU loves this as a university. The church loves this. It's in its DNA. The pioneers. You know what? We're not accepted here. We're going to go here, right? There's sort of a, uh, a, a righteous pride with we're going to do this whether anyone else joins us or not, right? That's sort of a BYU and a church thing. We're going to stand on this hill alone if needs be. I think BYU feels pretty stinking comfortable right now coming off of 11-1, and one, ranked 11th, number two pick, 13 dudes to the NFL initially, uh, hopefully a bunch stick, NIL, belt bar, all that. What reason does BYU have to feel like it has to do anything? Um, I don't think BYU feels like it's going to have to join a league based on this. Let's walk through those details. If it means that BYU can't schedule as many Power Fives, I think that'd still be fine. So instead of playing four or five, maybe you are playing three. And guess what? Now you're winning 10 games sometimes. And now you're more relevant. And now you have more draft picks. And now you're more discussed. I, I, I think there's a healthy balance there. And uh, so if that's the case, I'm all for this. Because I want BYU to be as relevant as humanly possible. Um, and in my opinion, that means easing up on the schedule. I, I think there will still be games to be had. I, I wonder if today these three leagues join together and say, all right, let's unify how many conference games we're playing. Some play nine, some play eight. Right. And then they may say, okay, let's, let's play each other every year or some rotation. Maybe there's bowl affiliation with, uh, that comes into it. We'll see. I wonder what the Big 12 is feeling today, by the way. See, that's... They're the one left out. They're the ones that are left out. And that is the byproduct that I hope is what happens. It's the result we of all... We need desperation. Is that, that Big the Big 12 realizes that in a couple of years or sooner, depending on whenever Oklahoma and Texas decide they want to get out... Sooner. Nice. I didn't mean that, but I'll, I'll, take, the, <laughs> I'll take the credit. That the Big 12 says we have to expand. We cannot dissolve this conference do you believe they will because they have done talking about, will they dissolve or that they will expand expand i because do believe they will expand any, at, they have done like because almost nothing they expanded a little bit in 2011 writing right adding west virginia and tcu but look l listen to the teams from the og big 12 that have left a&m to the sec nebraska to the big 10 missouri to the sec colorado to the pac-12 texas to the sec oklahoma to the sec we don't have evidence that the Big 12 is actually going to make a move that, that actually works for itself to be sustained. If they, if they want to be sustainable, I think they're going to have to move. Because right now, they're and again, all of this is subject to change depending on the wind, it seems like. But right now, there does not seem to be very much um, interest from these other pack or these other P5 teams to, to pluck some of these schools away. I know some of these thought, well, you know, Pac-12 will want us. Well, right now it doesn't look like that they are. Now, again, that can change. And, I, and they're going to talk about expansion today, too. Correct, what yes. What that means. But I, I think that's what I'm hoping is the end result of all this, is that the Big 12 realizes we're left out. 
We cannot sit here with eventually eight teams and survive as a conference. We are going to have to expand. So then you get teams like BYU and Boise State. You get your two that are out here in the West. And then you bring in your Cincinnati's and your UCF's. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's what I hope oh, I is the end result of all of this. I just don't think they'll do it. But I, like, I don't know. This, this alliance may be one of those things from a scheduling standpoint. And I get where you're coming from in terms of, okay, well, BYU then gets fewer P5s on their schedule. So, they're, fine. so they get maybe a few more wins. But my question is, and I understand they're under contract right now with ESPN, but does the payout become less? if your schedule year in and year out changes significantly in terms of the number of high-profile teams you're facing. Maybe, maybe, but that's not until the next ESPN deal. Like or until the, somebody wants to renegotiate. The current contract is what it is until the next one, right? I, I, well, BYU in, would not theory, negotiate yes. to a lesser deal. They don't have to do that. They're good through this contract. So I, I just, I want, I'm very curious to see what this alliance means specifically for BYU. And obviously nobody's talking about that because... They're focusing on the people that are involved in the alliance. I get that. Yes. We're focused on BYU and how it impacts the Cougars. Yes, it's, it's uh, you know, it's the SEC is NFL 2 right now. Uh, and then the other three are getting together. Again, I've, I've said I love risk. Like, the SEC is in Asia, and they get seven around, and they're about to turn in cards with Texas and Oklahoma, right? It feels like, uh, you know, North America and Europe and maybe Africa are these other three. And then there's the Big 12 sitting in South America getting two, I think, or three around. And it's just not enough to sustain, right? Um, what's going to happen? I, I, what's going to happen? Like, will BYU have any – by the way, shout out to my Montana, uh, you know, Billings alum, uh, alumni chapter. What's going to happen with, with BYU and all this? It may be nothing. I would almost, I would almost guess that it's probably nothing. Well, because no so, movement. Yes, because so far that's what there has been. There has been no movement. I mean, in the next couple of years. Like, I hope someone invites BYU. Right. That'd be great. Meaning I, the Big 12. I still believe BYU should just start showing up at Big 12 Media Day. And after a couple <laughs> of years, they're like, did we, did we invite them? What if we it's just like, started sending a like, reporter? I'm we're serious. Like, we're like, Jason Shepard's I'm, there. I'm serious. Like, what are you doing here? Because eventually they're like, wait a minute, did we invite them and just forget? <laughs> I guess they're part of us. They're like, is it 2016? <laughs> All right, let's move on to topic number two and something that we may have an answer to very soon, certainly much sooner than the answer to conference affiliation for BYU. Uh, and we mentioned it in the headlines. Uh, offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick has mentioned that he'd like to have the, the starter for the quarterback position named by Wednesday. And there is an opportunity to do it publicly today if that's what the coaches decide to do during media availability. But if that doesn't happen, will you be surprised if we do not know the starter by tomorrow? Yes, because Aaron Roderick gave us a timeline. He didn't have to give us a timeline. He could have just said, you know what, probably next week or we'll see, blah, 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 general. Nope, he gave us a specific thing. I'm ready to divvy up the reps with the starter, perhaps as soon as Monday, probably no later than Wednesday. So, yeah, I will be surprised if we don't know who the guy is. And there is a difference between them giving the reps and them announcing. I would, I would not expect BYU to announce the starter normally, and we would just see who he was against Arizona. Until two weeks ago, Kalani Sitake said the fans need to know. And I think NLI stuff needs to know. They may want to jump on that bandwagon, right? Businesses with whoever the starter is, potentially, for that reason. So I was kind of surprised that Kalani Sitake said that. I was like, all right, sweet. We'll know who the guy is. I bet we'll know who the guy is today or tomorrow. I will be surprised, certainly, by tomorrow. I'm actually going to be a little surprised if we don't know today. And I, I, think this, media availability. I think it's because media availability and honestly, it's an opportunity to get into the news cycle. Look, I mean, yesterday, the, uh, can I come in on that? Go ahead. The news cycle doesn't matter anymore. That is that is an old mindset. To no, me. Yeah. Social media has blown that up. Right. Your news cycle is whenever you want. That, that, social okay. media. that, that is true. I get it. Yeah. But you had you like for the 10 o'clock news. No, no, no. I'm the just newspaper. Say, no, 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 no. You had you had yesterday. Utah named their quarterback. So at least for, locally. Everybody was talking about the Utah quarterback. And so I think this is an opportunity when you have – because you don't have media availability tomorrow. That's why I'm talking about the, the news cycle. You're not having a – you don't have media availability you. tomorrow. Yeah. There's media availability today. You're going to be able to have sound bites today. So that's why I'm a, I would be Create a little surprised. I will be a little surprised if, if we don't know something today, but obviously by tomorrow. Yeah. I just think there's yeah. an opportunity where you have – and we don't know who's going to speak today during media availability, but you have an opportunity for Kalani and, and A-Rod to, to be able to put that out there today 
and with and, media availability. And, and so I would think that that's probably what will happen. And they don't have another one scheduled for this week. No, that's, why, that's what I mean, the news cycle. That's what if, I'm talking about. If you're about. getting into the news cycle, yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll see if they name one today. Uh, pay attention, uh, as Jason mentioned, to our social media. And uh, what time do the presses close on the paper? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what, the, you know, we may find out the starting quarterback today against Arizona, which is in how many days? Countdown to the Wildcats. 11. Okay. Here we go. It was all the way up to 11. Taryn Houck, 11. Was he 11? Our question of the day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Spinal tap? Yes. Uh, question of the day. Does the formation of the Big 12, Big 10, ACC Alliance force BYU's hand to eventually join a conference? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Continue to weigh in on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. What is going to be the conversation and uh, eventual move here for BYU? We, and when we say join a conference, to me it's like if BYU is not in the Big 12, it's, it's in AAC. the AAC. It's AAC. Those are the only realistic The, the Mountain West is situation. not – we're not even discussing the Mountain West. We're not – yes. If you think BYU is going back to the Mountain West at any point, I don't think you understand the uh, sentiment – between the two. It's Big 12 or AAC. Yes, it is. Yes. Or a combination of both of them. Okay, we'll get to uh, some of your posts coming up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, coming up, is Utah scared to play BYU? Somebody uh, thinks so. Okay, uh, Dave McCann on the QB race. He'll join us in studio. And unanswered questions 10 days out. Make it 11 from the season opener. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Broadcasters are way That's tougher than players. Algier into the end zone with a little punctuation. That is how you start countdown to kickoff. Touchdown! Isaac Rex laying out for the score. I'm, I'm gonna mark that one down. That's big enough. Early to start spicy, it. mark it down. Mark you know? it down. Yeah. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. After further review, looks at the 2021 difference makers this week. You can watch as Dave McCann, I've heard of him, Blaine Fowler and David Nixon break down the film. AFR available tonight on the BYU TV app, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day play by play. Jerem Jordan alongside Jason Shepard. We now welcome to the guest, former Blue and White Network sideline reporter, Dave McCann. What's up, Dave? <laughs> I've, come a, I've come a little <laughs> ways since then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those were the days. True Blue, remember we used to do True Blue yeah. here in this studio yeah. many moons ago, and now it's the, the mothership. So yeah. Run along. Yeah, we. I used to produce that, and you hosted that, and it was so bad they cut it for AFR and BYU Sports Station. <laughs> Listen, know? we were the pioneers. <laughs> Someone had to cut the trees down yes. and make a trail. Someone had to do something that you know elevated from there. That's what we did. Okay, we were talking about uh, you know this alliance with the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and uh, the ACC. 
what effect that could have on BYU. Will it force BYU hand, e- hand eventually to maybe have to join a conference? We were of the opinion that it, Jeff said, hey, maybe, yes. I said, ah, I don't think so. I think BYU likes to put its feet in the sand and they can do it alone. What's your opinion on that? Well, the, the excitement of the announcement today is, is, is well, that there's something. And really it's to try to slap the SEC. It's got nothing to do with us. Um, and then I think once the excitement of, hey, this alliance is being announced, we'll see that it really doesn't have much of an impact at all, especially for football where schedules are done so far in advance. Are we talking about in 2035? Is that when the alliance is? Well, we, we may have super conferences by then, probably will. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's going to have much of an impact. I don't think it forces BYU to react. What I'm most curious about is why they've decided that the Big 12 no longer exists. They're like, hey, what what, what do we do? Those guys just left. But it shows you uh, the power of the SEC, and it shows you how big Texas and Oklahoma are, where they just hop the conference, and then the the other three are all mad. Now they're going to get together. We're going to have a fight. Um, The SEC is going to win that fight. If you just look at the schools that uh, you take Clemson out of the mix, USC out of the mix, um, who's left uh, to, to contend as a national power? Ohio State, okay, they're in there. You take them out of the mix. But, but the SEC is going to stand firm through this whole thing. So getting Texas and Oklahoma for them was, was, was the greatest thing the SEC could do. And I, now everyone else is mad. Yeah, and, and I'm feeling like uh, coming off of NIL with Bill Barr and that season and Zach Wilson that BYU – more than ever in independence is feeling like, okay, at least for now, we can keep doing this. We're going to be okay. Yeah, if you have a TV partner like ESPN, you can do that. If, you, if BYU didn't have ESPN, then we'd be in a league, yep. you know, even if it was a league we didn't want to be in. Yep. But we have them, and we've had them since uh, the announcement came to go independent, and then they re-up for seven years. Uh, that's the power of college sports. Who has the SEC TV contract after, what, 23 ESPN. That's where the college power is. And, uh, and they're our friends. And we have a contract with them. That allows us for the next six years to figure it out. And it allows them to figure out where they want us. And I think that'll have a lot to do with where we go. Well, let, let's focus on something that we know will have an immediate impact on BYU. And that's the starting quarterback for this season. Will you be surprised if BYU does not announce a starting quarterback today or tomorrow? No. No, why should they? We, we all want to know because we want to write stories about it and do things about it. But, yeah, but we but, have a daily show. We need some content here. <laughs> You've got a daily debate every single day. Why would you want this to end? Uh, I think the team knows, or at least the quarterbacks know, and whether or not they've announced it, the team, probably not because there's no one can keep that a secret. Uh, and, and we'll hear maybe today, you know, like you mentioned a moment ago, uh, Aaron said, well, Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest. Um, I don't know if that means they can't say, yeah, well, we've decided. Uh, and we'll let Arizona find out uh, on September 4th. They got a new defense. They have a new defensive coordinator. They're coming off a miserable season. They're trying to figure out what they're going to be. And now all of a sudden they have three quarterback styles to deal with for their opener. Does it hurt BYU to just go, yeah, we know who our starter is. We'll see you on the 4th. I don't think so. Does it drive us nuts? Maybe a little? The only reason I think they'll announce is because Kalani said as much basically two weeks ago. He said the fans need to know. Because I thought they would do that. Like, oh, we don't have to tell you anything. We'll just roll them out. So I was like, oh, they're going to announce them. And then Aaron said that. So I thought, oh, they're going to say who it is. Just when will they say? I think they're they're the same thing that uh, um, Sean Payton, uh, the Saints coach, is dealing with. Last night after the game, you could tell he was so sick of the quarterback question. I think he rolled his eyes and exhaled and this and that. I think they're all sick of the quarterback question. Maybe that's why you throw it out there. I know Kyle Whittingham was sick of the quarterback question until yesterday. Or actually, it was all announced, and he says, I haven't announced. So even, you know, so <laughs> there's all that going on. Uh, that takes care of that. But in the, in the competitive preparation to beat Arizona, uh, Baylor and Jaron have very different styles, and Conover's a wild card. Does it, does it kill you to keep them guessing? I, I don't think it does. And would it kill us to get through another week and a half? Probably not. So who, gives us something to talk about tomorrow. So who gives BYU the best chance to win, in your opinion? I think Hall gives them the best chance to win. I've always been high on Conover, and I've always said through this whole thing that it wouldn't be surprised if he was behind center against Arizona. But if Hall is the quarterback, that means he has won the job. And how many times have we heard Kalani say, best 11 on the field? So if that's what they've decided, then Hall won the job, or Baylor won the job, or Conover won the job. Based on experience, and, and, and Halls look great in camp. They've all had 
uh, good camps from what everyone has said. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if it's Jaron Hall. Uh, and I think Conover is still the future. And uh, oh, yeah. I was thinking this morning, uh, Detmer didn't start as a freshman. I don't think McMahon started as a freshman. Our two greatest quarterbacks. Yeah, not true freshmen. Yeah. Right. But as they evolved, um, junior, senior years, uh, one was the best in the country and the other may be the best of all time. Uh, and so if, if Conover can get four games in and, keep, and then his redshirt year, that gives him uh, four more years to play. Um, we've all seen enough of him in practice. We've all talked to all the coaches. We've talked to all the players. Uh, he is the next thing. And uh, the next thing may be after the current thing. And that might be okay. BYU may have the only quarterback in history who's a third stringer who told Alabama no. That might be the first time ever that has happened with anybody ever, which could be <laughs> super weird. Okay, what unanswered questions are there that you're looking forward to trying to start to get answers against Arizona? I, I just want to see if the offensive line can be as big and as bad as, as we think they can be. And, and that means you establish the run, which takes the pressure off the quarterback, and with those five receivers and their rotation and the tight ends, you can get everything going early instead of, well, third, fourth game, we finally got, you know, how to do all this. But if the line can open up holes for Algier and Lapini, and I think Algier is going to have a huge year, motivated by the schedule and motivated by the 1,100 yards he had last year against the schedule that people say, well, that was against that schedule. So I think there's all kinds of motivation for Algier. And to have that big offensive line and him get the ball and run behind right tackle, if he's getting three, four, five yards of pop, that means everything's going to work. And uh, that's the quarterback's best friend. If he gets stuck behind the line, you know, and now it's third and 12, you know, then you got to go to those other tools, which are there. You know, that's not a, a death sentence. But as we saw last year, even in that bowl game where I think he was rushing for eight yards of carry, you know, and then Zach could drop back and do whatever he wanted. He still had to make the throws. Guys still had to get open. But it was all in play. And I think that starts with running the football at a school that passes the football. But when we've been great historically, uh, we've had a big bruising running back and a phenomenal quarterback and great receivers and an All-American tight end. Well, look at the makeup for this team. It's all there potentially. And uh, again, it all starts with number 25 running behind that line. If that line's big and nasty. And the defensive line too, which, which everyone has told us in camp is going to be better than what we expect. And for some reason, the D-line has gotten this uh, reputation of, well, they can't get to the quarterback. And historically, they haven't gotten to the quarterback in recent years. The linebackers may have. Um, but, uh, but that all appears to be mending as far as the talent and the depth that they have and the optimism of the, of the defensive side uh, of the coaches going, hey, look, we're going to be better than people think. And the strength of the defense is still the linebackers. So if the line's better than people think, then there should be some open lanes for Wilgar and Tooley and Peely and the others to come through there, wreak havoc, and do what they didn't do last year, which is cause turnovers. And if they can do that in this schedule, they can line up and win every game. Will they win every game? I don't know. Can they win every game? Uh, if they're healthy, yeah. Yeah, they could. Uh, could go they ahead, lose every put, game? No, they cannot. On, <laughs> they're playing Idaho State. Put the big ones on, Dave, over there. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm not saying they will. I'm just yeah. saying they could. You look at the matchups. There's not one matchup where you go, oh, we're dead. Yes. You know, yeah. if Alabama was on the schedule, we're like, you know what? Let's, let's, we're dead. Let's not get killed. If Ohio State's on that schedule, if Clemson's on that schedule, well, they're not. Yeah. We got good teams on the schedule, but BYU's a good team. So line it up and see. But I don't think we, we enter games double-digit underdogs. I mean, any of that schedule. There shouldn't be a single one. No. You're right. And then it's who takes care of the ball. Well, and you mentioned last year, and we all saw the offensive weapons that were on display and the numbers and the production uh, that was a result of that. When you look at what is around whoever the quarterback is, is there a chance that the weapons may be even better than what we saw last year as a collective? Absolutely. One, we've got... What? We had two tight ends last year and Wake. Now we have three and Wake, you know. Uh, we had Pau and Romney at receiver. We lose Dax. So we pick up the Nakuas. And then we add Hill, who's gotten better, and Jackson, who's gotten better, and some of those other guys. I, I think the talent pool is better than last year. The quarterback made it all work last year because he was phenomenal. Um, a quarterback who is not phenomenal but surrounded by the best accumulation of talent that this program's had in a long time can be good enough to win games 
And he might be great. And he can get to being great. Uh, but he doesn't have to do it by himself. You know, it's not all about, hey, you're all we got. Ty, run back, run around, and make all the plays. Well, Ty had running backs, receivers, tight huge end. offensive line, yep. tight ends. Yep. And, then, and, and they didn't, he didn't win every game either. But he won the Heisman Trophy because he was that good in that setting. So whoever this quarterback is has an opportunity to look really good because of the other 10 guys around him. And I love the evolution of the offense through Aaron Roderick. Yeah. That's Satake, Steve Clark, and company. I just love where we're at. The fact that BYU could keep A-Rod coming off of that is pretty notable. Number two pick, top five offense, that was good. Okay, let's finish with this, speaking of Zach Wilson. I love what's happening with Zach Wilson. We all do. It's awesome. It's preseason. He's crushing it. I'm a little hesitant in the regular season the next couple of years because the Jets traditionally just stink. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping he overcomes the organization, and maybe he's the savior of that organization. How do you feel about what the future could hold for Zach Wilson? Well, I like what Steve Young said on this show. Um, he's got enough 49er blood over there. It's not the <laughs> Jets. <laughs> he, he didn't go to the Jets. Uh, he went to a new coach who came from the 49ers. A lot of people thought he should go to the 49ers. I wanted him to go there because they're poised to win right now. Yes. And they're in a system that I think could feed his skill set. Well, some of that system is now running the Jets. Michael LaFleur, yeah. So I think... Um, I've watched him closely, too. It's, it's just great. You know, New York is such a, you throw a screen pass and they want to run the guy out of town. He complete a screen pass and he's the next Joe Namath. The same play. <laughs> just give him a first It's coat. just a different thing. Uh, but I think, uh, and we know Zach. Zach is level-headed and it looks, looks super young, but he gets it. And uh, his coach has said the same. He understands it. Um, he learned between his junior and senior year to get down. He learned to throw the ball away, not force it in. If he maintains what he knows and what he is, then he can do what he's done here in the preseason against preseason defense. But, but, um, but it's in the, in the head. Hey, you can throw a pick into a crowd of three defenders or not, whether you're in the regular season or the preseason. You can run for your life if you're running against the first string defensive end, which is probably going to happen. Um, but you know what? He's, he's got other defenses coming at him. But he knows that, hey, I need to not get hit by this guy. I'll either go down or throw the ball away. Um, he didn't learn. He learned that through the trial and error in injury here at BYU. And I think he's smarter. He's as smart as we all know he is. Uh, he's smarter than the NFL world thinks he is. And I think that will play out. If he wins five or six games and they're moving forward, he'll be the king of New York. He will. Outside of New England, there'll be this massive audience coming from Utah. And all the ratings will be like, what? oh, Zach Wilson. Yeah, That's and he's right. such a good guy. You know, yeah. celebrate a win with a chocolate milk, yeah, just like he did here at BYU. And <laughs> you know, The NFL needs that. And I think he can deliver it. And we just hope he stays healthy and, and hope he keeps smiling. Because when he's having fun, he's fun to watch. When he's not smiling, you know, things aren't going good. And this whole last season, he looked like he was having the time of his life. Yeah. But just throwing to guys making phenomenal plays, a huge line, a great running back. Um, again, that opens the door for the next guy to replace him because all those pieces are here in Provo. And then we wish Zach the best of luck with the, with the Jets. I had my first Jet shirt my whole life. I saw it. Oh, you got a Jet oh, shirt. Yeah, okay. I did. I felt I needed to. Nice. You had that within like a week of him being drafted, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I went. I made the commitment early. <laughs> yeah, you went it all in. Yeah. I thought, you know what? Yeah. I think the Jets are going to keep him <laughs> yeah. since they drafted him. Yeah, you know, there's <laughs> one more cut we need to worry about, I guess, before August 31st, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably not. How about Dax Millen? I think he's going to make the team. That'd be pretty good, right? That would be That'd awesome. Be so if good if he, if they team. don't keep him, somebody else will pick him up. Yes. I don't think he clears way. Somebody else will pick him up. Squad when somewhere. you're running with the ones in practice, and you're playing with the ones in the first and second quarter, that's a good sign for a seventh rounder. Yep. And uh, the Hobbs the coach loves of the NFL. Him. He's faster now. Did you see, notice him the other night? I didn't know he was that fast at BYU <laughs> when he was running. Maybe because he was running for his life with the Redskins or the football club or whatever it is. Yeah. But man, I think he's got a shot. That'd be yeah. awesome. Okay, Dave, we appreciate the time. After further review, tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. We'll it's going to be a great show tonight. It's going to yeah. be award win. That's the one we're submitting, right? It's a job. It could be. It's the job of keeping Nixon and Blaine <laughs> engaged <laughs> with not letting one yep. overtalk the other, yep. which, you know, is like two semis running You're the together. You're the same, yeah. same thing. Sure. I just start it and end it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. In elementary school as well. That's awesome. Thanks, See you guys. Dave. Thanks. All right, coming up, John Wilner thinks BYU will go 0 and 5 against the Pac-12. Oh great. yes, That's great, John. And uh, what we'll did discuss. last what did last night do for Taysom Hill's hopes to be the Saints starter? This is BYU Sports Nation. Ooh, a little 2013. Here. 
Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From accidents to wills, from bankruptcy to business law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with the free BYU TV app. I like it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. On the latest BYUSN right now, according to the BYU football players, Clark Barrington has the best mustache and is the best trash talker on the team. But it's time to see what he thinks of his teammates. Check it out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. He's Jason. I'm Jerem. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's whip it! Good whip around, presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. All right, the Twitterverse, which is different from the multiverse, okay. uh, was ready to name Jameis Winston the Saints starter last night. Yep. Sean Payton, the head coach of the Saints, though, however, refused to name a starter after the game. After last night, is Taysom's goal of starting less likely? No. Uh, maybe Jameis has a little edge right now based on last night, but... It wouldn't be the worst thing if Jameis was the starter, failed, and then Taysom came in. <laughs> Honestly, we all want Taysom Hill to be a quarterback because he was here. Yes. And that, da, 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 being quarterbacks different. We than want him in else. the league. The but yes, the best option for him as a football player, honestly, is him as the gadget guy. He's so good at that. I almost wonder if that's his actual future. Yes, we all want him to be a quarterback. That would be awesome. Being a quarterback in the NFL is so hard. There's only 32 starters in the world. Honestly, it wouldn't be the worst thing if he's not to start. It's okay. Look, there's no question about it. Jameis won the night. There's no question. Just based off of not just the numbers, but the percentage, the, the passing percentage. And perception. Yes, and perception. But uh, look, I get the feeling that Sean Payton is looking for reasons to name. I think he really... for reasons not, not to name Taysom. Well, no, I, th I think you know he wants... You know I think I mean? he like, wants... He's, he's the guy. Yes. Show me why wouldn't you be the guy. Yeah, I, I think he really wants... It's going to have to take Jameis to be so far and above better, I think, for Taysom to not be the guy. But I, look, I, I'm with you. At the end of the day, I just want Taysom to be in the league and to be relevant, however that is. But I know because of his offseason training and the fact that he's lost so much weight, he has put a lot of work into being a quarterback. Yes. So it, if he is not named the quarterback for him personally, I know it's going to be it's going to be pretty devastating. Playing on a team that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, so the standard's high, right? <laughs> him being on a team that struggles a little bit, it might be a like a better option for this situation because whoever starts they need to win well that's it, why i say it wouldn't be the worst thing if he was the back Jameis be the guy that replaces breeze you can replace the guy that replaced the guy yes exactly <laughs> big game boomer says arizona state utah and virginia are, are all secretly scared to play BYU this season do you believe this mm, no garbage no i do not <laughs> um yeah it's a <laughs> I, I, I look. We love we love Sorry, big you, game boomer when it's it, when it's stuff like this. But this one is just it's kind of a little little crazy for me. I I, I can't get behind this one. 
Utah scared to play? I, I, I'm not. I'm not buying for a moment that Utah, Utah who's won nine in a row, won't win again. Right? Um, hopefully BYU ends out this year. Arizona State, no. Virginia, now Bronco has tried to get out of the game with BYU. He's been very seems, public. He does not want this but matchup. Scared is not the right word. Yes, he's uncomfortable yes. coming back here again as an opponent. Oregon State in '86, <laughs> and now Virginia in 2021. <laughs> It is going to be a fun game, though. Oh, that'll be great. The, the I matchup. can't wait to see Marky and Kelly and Garrett and everybody. It'll be awesome. Hey, look, pregame and interview. Beck. Pregame interview with uh, with Bronco. Looking forward to it. Don't. Hello. Nope. Hello, nope. Spencer. Green room snack guy. All right, let's move on. The Action Network's Brett McMurphy. You can't access that website on BYU's campus. Makes it sound like he's like, a, like you know, on the news team in San Diego. <laughs> Hello, number two. <laughs> Brett McMurphy projects BYU facing Western Kentucky in the Independence Bowl. Do you like that matchup? Yay! We know it's Conference USA already. Right. BYU already played Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers. Another mascot Another mascot off? Oh, yeah, that's right. They had a little dance and everything. Yeah. That was a pretty wobbly pass from Zach Wilson. I'd never noticed that. Well, Did it get to where it needed two, to go? It wasn't the number one pick. It was the number two pick. Did it get to um, where it needed to go? Yeah. <laughs> where Colin was right. <laughs> no, um, it doesn't sound that great. No, BYU beat Western Kentucky 41-10 last year. That was a blowout. But Conference USA, Independence Bowl, it is what it is. Uh, hopefully we're in Shreveport, Louisiana, <laughs> partying in December. Uh, no, I don't like the matchup. It's not intriguing. But at the end of the day, all I want in a bowl game is for BYU to, to win. Oh, okay. That's the end, that's the end result I look, love forward, you love I look for and look forward to. So, but the matchup, no, I, I, I'm not too excited about in, that one. In what world are we excited about? <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, in the multiverse? And say, in what there's world? There's a reality where it, we love a matchup with Western Kentucky. It is a perfect segue to the next one. Did the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer live up to the hype? It did. There was hype? It did. It came out last night. I actually I actually scared my wife because I went, oh! <laughs> and, <laughs> and she's like, what? And I'm like, they, like I pulled it, they, they, they uploaded it. They uploaded it. So I watched it like four times in a row, watched it a couple of times this morning. Yeah, I, it lived up to the hype. My wife doesn't watch trailers so much so that when we go to a movie, she doesn't enter the theater until the movie starts. Oh, I love trailers. I, I love them. I do too. And so, I have to get there before the trailers start. Oh, you're intense. I'm, I'm that guy. I like that. Uh, we showed up at a movie recently where we missed the beginning of the movie because of this. But anyway, yeah, I, I showed it to my kids who watch Marvel movies all day and they were stoked. And I was like, don't tell mommy what happens in this. Yeah, it lived up. I didn't know there was hype, but it was very good. Yes, it, it was good. fantastic. I cannot wait. December 17th. In theaters. Let's get our tickets now. Are they on sale? No. I have Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings tickets. Though. Why didn't you ask me? I want to see that. Sorry. I'm going with somebody else. Oh. It's a couple's date. It's a couple's date. Oh. Does that this... make it worse or better? I'll tell you. <laughs> All right. Coming up. Top five quarterback battles at BYU. And Speaking Joe... of battles, he and I are going to battle after not getting that invite. <laughs> yes, we are. That's why there's uh, social distance here. <laughs> and uh, John Wilner says, BYU is going 0-5 versus the Pac-12 in his biased opinion. What do we think in our biased opinions? This is BYU Sports Nation. This is where we dominate. Our playground. Place of business. This is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves, and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Hey Cougars, Coach Dave Rose here. I might not be on the court right now, but I still play on my sport court basketball court at home. Now more than ever, we all need a safe place to stay home, stay healthy, and play with family. I have an active family with my kids, grandkids, former players. My wife and I decided the best thing we could give our family is the gift of backyard memory. Sport court provides a place to help kids become champions, and they're certainly popular in our neighborhood. For our new home, we chose sport court. Learn more about designing yours at sportcourt.com. My name is Spencer Finnegan, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future.
Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest Deep Blue podcast, Jerem Jordan talks with All-American soccer player Michaela Coulihan about her upbringing, getting drafted, but staying at BYU for two more seasons, and what the 2021 team is capable of doing. Listen to it on the BYU Radio app or where podcasts are found. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan alongside Jason Shepard, who I need to invite to a movie after the last segment. Okay, John Wilner uh, put out his predictions for all the Pac-12 teams this year. And in them, he had BYU losing all five games <laughs> to the Pac-12 teams. Let us remind you who BYU is playing, okay? Uh, a team called Arizona, then Utah, Arizona State, uh, Washington State, and USC. In, he said in his Pac-12 biased opinion, 0-5, which is just stupid. Uh, yeah. What do you think BYU's record will be against these five? Uh, well, look, I think, first of all, saying 0-5 is crazy. <laughs> And I will let you draw your own conclusions as to why John Wilner, you believe, said 0 and 5. We'll just yeah. leave it at that. Yeah. But um, look, I I would he, I would not be as as upset about this if he had said one and four. At least he's acknowledging that there's no chance that Arizona's beating BYU. Yeah, you, yeah. Arizona's going to lose that game. Arizona's if going BYU to lose. BYU loses the game to Arizona. We're going to blow a gasket. Yeah, we, there will be oh gaskets my. blown. There is so no, many gaskets. Yes. Yes. So, but the fact that he has 0-5, it doesn't matter what he says beyond that because at, at that point, there is no validity to anything he said. Okay, let's walk through each game. Arizona, this team stinks. Uh, they've won, won an average of five games a year the last five years before 2020. They're not good, okay? They got a quarterback battle as well. They're figuring it out. Utah. Utah, BYU's playing Utah in history, okay? That's a tough game. We all hope BYU wins this game, okay? It's BYU TV. Arizona State. Spencer has pointed out wisely that uh, they're perennially overrated. They're the new UCLA. Uh, they have won eight games in a year once the past six seasons. What have they done? What have they done to deserve this? Yes, they're pretty talented, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they break out this year for a nine-win season, okay? And then uh, Washington State, 7-10 and ten the last two years. And I would ask you, what's more likely? Washington goes to a bowl game or Nick Rolovich gets vaccinated? <laughs> we'll see. Okay, and then USC. USC obviously looks like the toughest team on the schedule. And it's on the road. Yes. Uh, BYU beat this team in 2019. Like, it is more than possible, right, um, that BYU beats USC. Also, this is the last game of the regular season. How motivated is USC in this moment if they're not in the Pac-12 title game? I would submit that as well. So, I would uh, I would be shocked if BYU is anything but two and three, three and two. Two and three is the minimum. If it's four and one, yes, one, five and zero, oh, zero oh and five, one and four, I will be very surprised. Two is the two wins. Two and three is the absolute minimum. Washington State and Arizona. Correct. Those and then three is certainly very possible. Yes. And then if you, you get to four or more, that means you beat then, Utah or USC. Yes. Then, then you're then you're talking about. Being a juggernaut. But if that one is Utah, most fans would take it. That's what it feels like. Yeah, so... Uh, so yeah, minimum two, likely three. Yes. And a, a reminder that Cougar Stats has uh, told us about. BYU wins 40% of its games against Power Fives. Oh, to so say 0-5 oh is, and three. is ridiculous. Uh, it's but, just ridiculous. But BYU's playing seven. When you, when you zoom out and you look at the seven, you had in Baylor and Virginia. Three and four is a likely thing. Four and three is my hope. Seven and oh is your hope. Okay, realistic. Four and three is the hope against those seven. All right, coming up, a former BYU Cougar hangs up the sneakers. And Top 5 Tuesday presents the top quarterback battles going into seasons in BYU history. Oh, that's number one. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing.
Stories have a way of framing some of the important conversations that we're already having and giving us the language that we sometimes have a hard time finding. The Appleseed is a show filled with stories for you and your family. Tall tales, fairy tales, folk tales, personal and family tales, all kinds of tales from all kinds of tellers. And we always hope that the stories that we bring you on the show spark memories for you that you can share with the people that you love. My school had a student songwriting competition and I submitted my very own song. The results! They posted! You won! Congratulations, Amelia. I didn't know you wrote songs. Can't wait to hear it on the school's website. Wait, what? You could always get someone else to do it if you don't want to. So I thought, what about Nick? Oops. Tell me I didn't just text that to my bio group. And that escalated quickly. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps. All oh, little Baylor Romney love and photos. Love the agenda of the editors. Great. <laughs> can always download the podcast. Just Google Sport BYU Sports Nation podcast. And while you're there, subscribe, rate, and review. Okay, Top 5 Tuesdays presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing with the announcement of the starting quarterback expected to happen perhaps soon. We look at the top five quarterback battles in BYU history. Let's go all the way back to 2007 for number five. That would be Max Hall, Cade Cooper, and Brendan Gaskins. <laughs> the battle started in the spring between Hall and then Snow College transfer Cooper, but Cooper suffered a season-ending foot injury in the spring game and then transferred that summer. Gaskins took the opportunity in that spring game to throw his name in the hat, going 19 for 22 for 174 yards. But we all know how this one ended. Max Hall won the job and never looked back. Hall was named first team all Mountain West Conference in 2007 and led BYU to an 11 and 2 record. Winning his quarterback in BYU history right there, man. Number four, Tanner Mangum and Zach Wilson, 2018. Mangum was coming off a season ending Achilles injury. 2017, Zach Wilson came in as a freshman. BYU did not announce starting quarterback until it released its depth chart eight days before the first game against Arizona. Eight days, huh? Hmm, maybe three days from now. Wilson took over for Mangum uh, after six games, going four and three, winning the Idaho Potato Bowl, going a perfect 18 for 18. And this just in, Wilson had a pretty good uh, career after that. Yes, he did. Number three, Jake Heaps and Riley Nelson in 2010. So junior Riley Nelson and true freshman Jake Heaps split reps for the entire first game of that season in a 23-17 win over Washington and then split reps in the first half of the second game against Air Force before Nelson played the entire second half. Nelson started the third game at Florida State, but Heaps took over in the second half. Following the Florida State game, it was announced that Nelson would have season-ending shoulder surgery, giving Heaps the starting job. Heaps went on to lead the Cougars to a 52-24 win over UTEP in the New Mexico Bowl. Yeah, that got awkward in 2011, right? Number two, Taysom Hill and Tanner Mangum, 2016. Before Hill was in a quarterback battle with Jameis Winston, he was in one with Tanner Mangum. Hill decided to come back for another year after a season-ending injury in 2015. Uh, and what a year... Tanner Mangum had in 2015 as a freshman, one of the best ever. Uh, Taysom Hill was given the starting job on his 26th birthday, which was yesterday, by the way, his birthday, uh, 11 days before the season opener versus Arizona. 11 days before the season opener versus Arizona? Ooh. What? Hill suffered another season-ending injury, unfortunately, against Utah State in Game 12, hyperextending his elbow. Mangum finished the season by helping beat Utah State and then uh, beat Wyoming on 96 yards passing in the Poinsettia Bowl. I remember uh, a nice highlight we put out about that game. Which, oh, yeah. <laughs> Congrats to Josh Allen. <laughs> and number one, Mark Wilson and Jim McMahon oh, in 1978. Yeah. Two future first round draft picks battled it out for the starting job. Now, Wilson ended up winning the job to start the season. When Wilson got hurt in the third game against Colorado State, McMahon took over and led BYU to the victory. From that point on, the two quarterbacks shared duties for the rest of the season. Not a bad situation when you have to split reps between two guys like Jim McMahon and Mark Wilson. College Football Hall of Famers. I yes. mean, incredible. And I think Lavelle said after that, we're never doing this again. We're never going to split reps. <laughs> so he didn't the rest of the time. Drew Miller, I think a freshman in 97, got a little run, and that was like 
Okay. Drew Miller. Wow, that Drew is Miller. a long time ago. Let's go. Uh, our question of the day. Does the formation of the Pac-12 Big Ten ACC Alliance force BYU's hand to eventually join a conference? At Kip Kent on Twitter. If an alliance scheduling agreement all but eliminates games of those conferences, I'm not sure it will, it would decimate BYU's Power 5 schedule. This year, y- yes. This year alone, such an alliance could eliminate half BYU's scheduled opponents, leaving no choice but to join a conference just to fill a schedule. I don't believe that'll be the case. Now, th- now let's say, worst case scenario today is that these three say, you know what, we're not going to play anyone in our non-conference but us, right. these three. That could be a massive... Which uh, is, is not crazy. That very I well ho- could be mentioned today. I hope it doesn't happen, but just thinking out loud, that could be, that could be the worst-case scenario for BYU. Then BYU would play uh, the Big 12 and SEC as much as possible and go from there. Look, and future contracts can be broken. All you need to do is pay Every somebody. Every contract can be broken. Every, Every you contract. Could, there's, there's outs, and all there needs to be is some money exchanged yep. to get out of a contract. That's all that would take... Yep. And last time we checked, all of these a, schools have lots of money. Can you have a scheduling prenup? <laughs> Our <laughs> Elite Voice of the Day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, at Roberts M underscore MN. Yes, but definitely eventually. Before the end of the decade, before BYU wins another natty, before the Vikings win a Super Bowl. Okay, your Minnesota was showing there. Today's uh, Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America Credit Union, uh, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. I want to give a special one to Hemahe Muli, our co-worker, who tweeted the following. Thank you for all the fasting prayers and messages of love. On Friday, I was in the ICU with COVID complications and almost died. Today, by the grace of God, I have recovered and been cleared to return home to my, uh, to my home and my family. We have been uh, concerned yes. about Hema the last couple days privately. He put this out uh, within the last few minutes, so we are ecstatic that Hema is feeling better and going home because it was uh, touch and go there for a minute. So, Hema, we love you, man. We can't wait to see you in the office, but hopefully it's not for a week or two. Take it easy, man. Yeah, take it easy and uh, come back when you can. Absolutely. Thanks to today's guest, Dave McCain. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always use hashtag BYUSN. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Squally Canada. Don't miss after further review tonight at 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Go Cougs. Let's go watch the uh, Spider-Man trailer again. Yeah, baby.